Hello, and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver, and I'm a scientist, and back there is Cindy Oliver, and she's a dog. Now, both of us are a little perplexed at the moment because we've just seen a video from Dr. John Campbell entitled, Viral Transmission Not Tested in Pfizer Trials. And we can't decide whether it's demonstrating his ignorance or if he is just grifting. So we'll show you a few clips from the video and explain why we're so perplexed. Now, this is my interpretation of this because this is only me. Um, COVID Pfizer vaccine uh, was not tested on stopping the transmission of the virus before it entered the market. This was not done before, vaccine, before the vaccine entered general rollout, despite us being assured that everything all the normal stages were carried out as they would be for any new product. And yet it turns out now we know what, however long it is now later, two years later or whatever, this wasn't done. This really is, I think this is really quite scandalous. And I certainly feel personally let down by it. I'm sure a lot of you do. So there are two things in this clip that we found odd. Firstly, John seems to be suggesting that up until now, he didn't realise that the original Pfizer trials didn't look at transmission. This is really odd because the trial was published in December 2020 in the New England Journal of Medicine, and it's pretty clear that transmission wasn't an endpoint in the trial. So either John has never read this pivotal trial or he didn't understand it or he's grifting. And if he missed the NEJM study, he could have read the FDA press release from when the Pfizer vaccine was approved, which contained this information. At the time, data are not available to make a determination about how long the vaccine will provide protection, nor is there evidence that the vaccine prevents transmission of SARS-CoV-2 from person to person. Or he could have looked at the UK DHSC guidance, which says testing should continue even for those who have been vaccinated. Clinical trial evidence demonstrates that the vaccine reduces clinically severe infection and severe disease. The impact of the vaccine on preventing transmission remains unknown and individuals who have been vaccinated may still carry and be able to transmit the virus. It's strange that John missed all of this at the time. Even stranger is the fact that he seems to think that testing for transmission is normally part of clinical trials. Now, um, at the time, I remember representatives of the UK government who've now been made into dames and knights and all sorts of things emphatically telling us that everything that was normally done in any clinical trial was done during these trials. They gave us their word about this. Testing the transmission is not typically part of a phase three clinical trial. For example, here's a paper describing a clinical trial for a measles vaccine from the US way back in 1963. Transmission wasn't an endpoint. And likewise, it wasn't an endpoint for this measles vaccine trial, which was undertaken in the UK in 1964. And here's a paper describing a more recent vaccine trial, in this case for the quadrivalent HPV vaccine. Again, transmission wasn't an endpoint. Of course, the fact that transmission wasn't an endpoint in the original clinical trials doesn't mean it wasn't looked at in later studies. John would know this, surely, wouldn't he? Now, I do stress that this is not me saying this. This is, this is uh, Mr. Roos saying this. So we'll just clarify the YouTube guidelines now, uh, because YouTube, we can't say anything that uh, contradicts local health authorities or the World Health Organization. So I'm certainly not saying that. And uh, efficacy of the vaccines, we're not allowed, I'm not allowed to say content that claims that the vaccines do not reduce transmission or contraction of the disease. 
Now, some of you might think that that was implied by um, by Mr. Roos and Miss Small, but that's entirely your conjecture. That's nothing to do with me. And just in case his nudge nudge wink wink technique isn't clear to you, he explains what he is doing in another video that he recorded with Pierre Corey, which is on a, another platform. I, I do a lot through intimation, you know, giving the camera funny looks and, yeah, <laughs> you know, you know yeah, pe yeah, people yeah. know what I mean, you know. And, and you yeah. get away with it. Yeah, you know, and of course, Vladimir Putin has nothing to do with that. Right, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know. um, so John is suggesting that the Pfizer vaccine doesn't reduce transmission, but of course he's not saying it directly. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. The thing is, though, his suggestion is totally wrong. Although we didn't have the data when the vaccines were first approved, several studies have now been done that show that COVID vaccines do reduce transmission. And note, I am saying reduce, not prevent. Vaccines have never been 100% effective at anything. COVID vaccines reduce transmission in two ways. Firstly, by reducing detectable infections, because if you don't get infected with a significant dose of SARS-CoV-2, you can't pass it on to anyone else. And secondly, vaccines reduce transmission by reducing your chances of passing the virus on if you do get infected. Here's an example of a paper that showed that the Pfizer vaccine reduced both symptomatic and asymptomatic infections. Interestingly, John made a video about it when the study was first released. Let's have a listen to a bit of the video. Now, because this is people are being tested here and 72% who don't have the virus, they don't test positive for the virus. And of course, if you don't test positive for the virus, you can't spread it. So from this, we can say that the first dose of the Pfizer is reducing the transmission of the virus because people without the virus can't, <laughs> obviously, can't be spreading it. There you have it, straight from John's mouth. So why is he now suggesting that vaccines don't reduce transmission? Has he forgotten this paper that he made a video about or is he just grifting? There are also a number of papers showing that vaccines reduce your infectiousness if you do get infected after vaccination. A lot of them were done with earlier variants, so they're not directly relevant now. However, this paper here looked at transmission of Omicron within Danish households. So let's have a look at what they found. This figure compares being vaccinated and booster vaccinated with being unvaccinated in terms of both infectiousness and susceptibility to infection, as well as the combined effect of both. And as I've already covered, both of these are relevant to transmission. The figure also breaks the data down by BA1, which is in blue, and BA2, which is in red. The black lines are a comparison between BA1 and BA2. As you can see, the combined effect is superior to being unvaccinated for both vaccinated and booster vaccinated individuals, with booster vaccination being superior to just being vaccinated. So even with Omicron, vaccination does reduce transmission to a certain extent. Now, it's quite possible that John isn't familiar with this study and others showing similar results, and it's possible he never read the original Pfizer trial and that he forgot about the study he presented that showed that vaccinations reduce transmission. He regularly admits that he doesn't know everything. But I haven't got a flipping clue. So is Dr. John Campbell's video on Pfizer vaccine transmission just ignorance or is it grifting? I'll let you decide. If you'd like to look further into the data I've presented, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked or commented on the video, 
double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee. I really appreciate your support. I will be making more videos about the science in the future. So if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.